media have descended on Puerto Rico since Hurricane Maria devastated the island a year and a half ago, and many reported on its struggle to rebuild its energy grid. But behind the scenes, some policymakers and fossil fuel industry leaders are using the crisis to transform Puerto Rico into a hub for liquefied natural gas, gas obtained from hydraulic fracturing or fracking in the mainland United States. To rebuild the devastation of Hurricane Marie, this LNG has potential to reshape the Puerto Rican grid, making it safer and more reliable. Climate activists have decried these efforts. The interest of the gas producers in the United States pushing for a gas market in Puerto Rico for their products. Liquefied natural gas, or LNG, is methane gas that's been super chilled to a liquid state. It gets shipped via tankers from oceanic ports. As fracking has taken off in the mainland United States, so have shipments of LNG. The tie to the fracking is not lost on advocates in Puerto Rico. Trying to sell us that gas is a clean energy. It is not, especially the gas that comes from the United States, which is fracking gas. That is dirty gas because of the, the the effects it's causing on the, on the environment. Industry supporters tout natural gas as a more climate-friendly fossil fuel and potential bridge fuel to a renewable energy future. Here's a clip from an informational video from ExxonMobil. This energy source carries tremendous benefits for consumers and the environment. It is versatile, clean burning, and abundant. But scientists fear that gas infrastructure could pose a major climate threat due to its capacity to lock in long-term supply chain. Scientists know that methane traps about 87, I've also seen 90 times as much uh, carbon, uh, as much heat as carbon would over a 20 year period. And that's really what's important. It's the short term, the short lived climate pollutants like methane that are really going to pack the biggest punch over the short term. Despite these concerns, Puerto Rico included the build out of three LNG import terminals as a central component of its integrated resources plan, the plan for its energy grid published in February. There's, since so, there's so much of it that people have described it as a glut of natural gas in the U.S. Um, there are people and corporations interested in making Puerto Rico the um, natural gas hub or the frac gas hub of the Caribbean. The Trump administration has made it easier to export LNG to the island by reclassifying tankers as small scale. In July, the Energy Department finalized a rule to deregulate these so-called small-scale tankers. Small-scale shipments are considered consistent with public interest, which sets them on a fast track to approval. Companies' small-scale LNG export proposals no longer have to go through public hearings or pass environmental review. In a press release announcing the rule, U.S. Secretary of Energy Rick Perry cited the Caribbean market as a key destination of small-scale LNG. Though build small scale, the actual size of the shipments are as big, if not bigger, than conventional LNG exports. Meg Gentle, the CEO of the company Tellurian, which specializes in small scale LNG exports, explained it herself at a 2017 event. LNG construction is a massive economies of scale business, and there are some um, projects that talk about. Uh, small scale and in fact you know we did some research on trying to reduce the size of the the plant um, to bring smaller quantities into market as the market grows what we learned is that there really are no economies of small these efforts have triggered ire from Puerto Rican climate activists the politicians publicly is we shouldn't uh, build our future on the top of the people who are being harmed in the north. While Puerto Rico does have regulations in place promoting renewable energy, the country has failed to achieve its goals. Uh, what is known as a renewable portfolio standard enacted into law in Puerto Rico, and um, those goals have not been met, not even by, by far. It, they haven't been met. And um, so we're still depending on, as I mentioned earlier, 97% to 98% fossil fuels. Some say that renewable energy and solar energy in particular should sit at the center of Puerto Rico's future energy plans. I think we are advancing. I think we are making some progress. I don't think that it's fast enough. 
we are talking about being uh, 100% renewable by, by 2050. I think climate change won't give us that amount of time. Climate change will push us to towards renewable uh, quicker than that. In the meantime, some Puerto Ricans have taken the transition into their own hands. Um, one of the things that we learned, one of the lessons that were definitely learned um, from the Hurricane Maria aftermath is that communities need to play an active role um, and not be just passive consumers, but rather what are being called prosumers, that is producers and consumers of energy. They need to you know, use rooftops, uh, especially in other um, places close to the point of use for um, installations of photovoltaic systems and battery energy energy storage systems. For The Real News Network, I'm Dimitri Liscaris.